Okay, so this is week three, dealing with um, procedural city generation in Maya using MASH. So here we have um, 10 different meshes, and let me just kind of go through these real quick. They're all the same size. Um, we're basically going to be kit bashing these kind of like a Lego set. So you have a bunch of different pieces, and you're going to be putting them together and then randomizing, randomizing them to kind of create different buildings. Um, so some things to keep in mind when you have um, kind of your pieces ready is they need to be UV'd, make sure that there's no history, that they're uh, centered, that the pivots are all centered, and that they're at the origin, right? So we kind of have basically one shape that they're reading as, and this is going to be important because they need to be taking up basically the same amount of space when you propagate them in MASH. Okay, so I'm going to select all these, make sure we're in the animation tab here, go up to MASH, create MASH network, all right? So a couple things, uh, make sure it's named, and then you can use one of these distribution types if you want. I'm just going with this one because it's more straightforward. And another thing is make sure that this is uh, instancer, not mesh. Um, default is on mesh, and basically when you use that, it's when it duplicates everything and propagates it throughout your, your uh, 3D space, it's duplicating the actual geometry. So it really is taxing your computer a lot more than if you were using an instancer, which is just basically referencing the geometry and then uh, duplicating it in your viewport so it's not actually there but it's it's and the, the there's no actual geometry there it just looks like it's there so use the instant search a lot faster all right so i'm applying close so we have created our mash network um just some things to keep in mind here uh your, your tabs and everything are going to be over here but if you want to see it in your outliner just type in mash and then press the x um it's kind of a glitch but you have to do that in order for your mash network to show up in your outliner but it's just got a handy way of you know pulling it back up because sometimes you'll be like ah oh, where'd that go and then you know so it's just really quick um so we're gonna go over here to this distribute number of points i'm gonna set it to five and then you have a bunch of different op options here feel, feel free to explore that i'm not going to go over it in this tutorial so distance on y i'm going to increase that until we get kind of this stack going on here okay that'll be good all right um Cool. So the next step we're gonna, next thing we're gonna do is I'm gonna go to buildings. We're gonna add a replicator node. Cool. Basically, it's exactly what it sounds like. Just repeats your, your network over and over again. Zero. And I'm gonna set this to. Let's do something like forty. Okay. Cool. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm basically just gonna create the same thing on the z-axis. Set that to 10. And on the Z, I'm going to set it to 40. So, and then the next thing we're going to do, as you can see, we only have basically one of the one of the 10 pieces, only one being referenced as it's kind of repeating throughout all this our system, our, our network here. So we want to basically randomize the um, the IDs, is what they're called. Um, we want to randomize all of these different meshes so that it looks like these are a bunch of different buildings. So go to your to buildings, click on ID, add ID node. And uh, as you can see, it's already kind of doing some cool stuff here. But uh, we want it to be more random because you can see kind of as it's going on here, there's a pattern. We want to make it completely random. So just go over here and select uh, from linear, go to random. Make sure your ID, ID count is the same as the actual number of IDs that you already have. And then you can do this random seat here, which is just, you know, it's basically just uh, if you want something different, you can check that out too. Um, there's some more specific options like probability ramp, strength, and everything. Look into those. I'm not going to go over them in this video. But as you can see, it's been four minutes. And we basically already have a, a procedural city generated. So not perfect, but um, this has a lot of different uses, not just for procedural city generation, but for, you know, any kind of propagation that requires some level of randomness. Um, you can you you can basically implement this. So, um, yeah, very 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 quick. Um, another thing to keep in mind too is that because this is all referencing um, basically ten pieces of geometry, you can alter these pieces of geometry and it'll update real time, right? So if I go if I go over here, let's find um, which one is this? Let me find this real quick. I'm gonna hide these, pull these back up, and just kind of go through these real quick. Um, I'm looking for this guy okay so if I take this guy and I just pull it over here I'm gonna bring this back right so as you can see this this geometry is basically this one right here if I go in here 
Just grab these. Hopefully Maya doesn't crash. And I extrude. Check this out. It's propagating through the entire network. So as you can see, this is extremely, extremely fast and very, very efficient because you can update anything at any point in the workflow. So just wanted to do a quick demo on that. And the next thing I'm gonna be going over is basically how to kind of create a little bit more organic placement of your buildings because this is a little bit grid structure right now. We're gonna do go over some ways to make that a little bit more organic. Okay, so here's another approach to kind of propagating a city if you're doing more on a large scale, like a skyline, right? So we're gonna be using a node called the placer node, uh, which is a, a node in MASH that basically uh, it's a little bit more hands-on. You have a little bit more control over where you want instances uh, specifically. So bring up our, our mesh network and we're going to plug in the placer node. And this is more of like a, a painting map based node. So you're going to be doing it by hand, but you can, as you can see, get some really organic results, which is a little bit more realistic depending on what you're going for. Um, but you get some options there. As you can see on the right-hand side, there's a lot of attributes you can change. Um, be aware of the, the ID mode at the bottom. That's pretty important. If you want to adjust what specifically, which ID you want to place, that nudge tool is very useful too. And again, you can select individual instances, move them, rotate them, scale them. So it's all interactive. Remember, this is MASH so that we're Everything is procedural at this point. We can add a, a random node, change the rotation, right? So, yeah, yeah, very, very useful. You can add an ID node if you want to change the, the, the types of the buildings after you've already placed them. You're welcome to do that. And yeah, so that's pretty much the placer node. We're going to try something a little bit different here. We're going to create a new mash network, and we're basically going to... Um, tell MASH where we want our buildings based off of a map. So I'm gonna create a ramp here and I'm gonna put on textures just to show you what I'm doing basically. And we're gonna use the distributor node and set it to grid, it's really important. Make sure your grid is the same size as the map that, or the floor plane that you're using, okay? So we're just gonna get a bunch of instances going here. We're gonna drop the floor plane into the map helper. That's under the strength attribute. And um, basically what I'm doing here in the node editor is I'm just trying to find that ramp that I put on the blend. And I'm just going to connect it to the math strength of the distributor node in MASH. So don't get, don't be too scared by that. But So we're going to plug it into the strength. And now you can see that that ramp is dictating where those buildings are being propagated which obviously has a lot of implications. So now we're gonna take this one step further and we're not gonna use a ramp, but we're going to use a map that we've created to tell MASH where we want our buildings to be. So we're gonna import a texture and it's one that I've made actually procedurally in After Effects. So you can create these um, procedurally as well. And then we're basically going to locate our nodes and do the same thing, just plug them together. There's a, a couple of different resources out there for creating maps procedurally. One of them is uh, JSplacement, it's a really, really good one. And then of course you can learn it in After Effects if you wanted to. All right, so we we're gonna take our texture Gonna load that up and we're going to plug just to show you what's going on in the color and then also into the strength map so as you can see for the most part the buildings are occupying only the white spaces and if we increase the density you can see it a little bit more clearly but uh, this is just a little bit more realistic way of going about city propagation on a large scale and then of course it's procedural so you can add an id you can change the, the type of the buildings um, yep. Yeah, so fully procedural. So we're going to move on here to um, a little bit smaller scale. When you're working with a set, you have a lot of set pieces that you need to kind of put around your set. 
How do you do that? Well, we're going to use a placer node again. And um, this time, we're not going to be using so much of uh, the scatter feature as we are going to be using individual IDs. As you can see, you can basically just plop down a couple street lamps, change your ID to maybe a trash can, and just put them down. So very, very quick. Really, really fast if you gotta just throw something down. Again, for something like Previs, this is really, really fast. So, and again, you can select individual instances, rotate them if you need to, just put them in place. And um, if you don't wanna do that, you're welcome to select the original mesh and adjust that if you need to. Again, fully procedural. So for this week, the purpose is kind of how to how to go about creating a city procedurally. Um, we've gone the, we've gone over buildings and kind of smaller set pieces like lampposts and benches. But uh, how do you go about roads? Um, well, there's a technique that I've kind of stumbled across, which is uh, really good for going about this. So we're going to go into create and we're going to create a CV curve. I'm going to go into an orthographic view. I'm just going to make a really simple kind of horseshoe shape. Really simple. Okay. Go back into perspective and I'm going to create a cube. Focus in on the cube. We're going to do a little bit of modeling here. Okay. I'm just going to scale that out. We're going to go to just create some. Yeah, that'll be okay. Face mode. We're going to extrude these four faces here. Just double check, make sure everything else is selected. Pull this down. Grab these. Extrude. Pull it up. Okay, so we kind of have this I beam shape here. I'm going to go ahead and delete history, scale it up just a little bit. Okay, look at this curve. Yeah, scale it up. I'll be good. All right, freeze transforms. I'm going to select this. I'm going to snap it over here to this curve. Focus in here. And just make sure that this is kind of centered up. Okay. So I'm going to select the front faces of this kind of I-beam shape here, like so. And I'm going to shift select, extrude along the curve. We're going to up these divisions. Great. So now what we have here, actually, you conventionally you would delete history at this point if you're working with modeling. But uh, one thing that you can do is uh, you can keep history and adjust this curve. And in, turn, in doing so, you're going to actually adjust the mesh because it has history on it. So I'm going to select this guy to vertex control vertex you can actually adjust the mesh now based on the curve it's kind of like a deformer in a lot of ways but uh, there's a lot of very cool applications for this because you're using a curve and because a lot of um, basically functions in Maya can be based around using a curve let me show you a kind of an application for this that is really really cool uh, using mesh so I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of the scene I'm gonna open up another one I'll open a scene I'm gonna open up this highway scene here so what I did was I basically used the curve information with what we just went over, All right? Let's see if I can kind of get rid of these. Get rid of these. Nope. <laughs> so, okay. so just isolate. So basically using mash, you can animate along curves and you can propagate along curves. And so what I did was basically create a really, really low res car and then using the principles that we went over, you propagated along the curve. And then using a mash, using mashes, uh, networks animated along the curve. So what we have here is a little highway. And the cool thing here is that if I just go into wireframe, go into control vertex, this entire thing is procedural, right? So I can go in here, change the highway shape, and it's going to Update the cars, the path, and the highway all at the same time, okay? And this has a lot of applications. Just keeping this one curve, I have actually done a little bit of like pre -vis and just, if we go back here, grab this little motorcycle, right? And I've attached the motorcycle to the curve and to the motorcycle, I've attached the camera, right? So if we go in here, camera shape one, we actually have this really cool little pre -vis shot here, right? Now this is all procedural, keep that in mind, right? So if I go back in here to perspective view, I can update this curve, right? Go in here, update the curve. 
And in doing so, go back over to our first camera. It's going to update the animation. It's pretty cool. So that's a bit of um, an overview of kind of how to approach procedural city generation using Maya and MASH. Uh, it's, been a, it's been a good week. I've learned a lot and uh, really excited to get more into MASH. I think it's a really, really, really powerful tool in Maya. So, yep, until next week.